Welcome to Creating Art with Jenny. Today I'm going to paint a poppy in a clear vase and my poppies have just started blooming. I'm so excited and so I'm going off of a picture that I have um, because you're technically I don't think you're supposed to pick poppies in uh, California because they are, are a state flower but I do propagate them in my yard because I love them so. They're just beautiful and vibracious and then uh, just also just a, a, another way to paint a glass bottle or a glass vase I guess today and so I have drawn my um, outline of my vase and I want to go back because it is going to be pretty clear I do not want the harsh lines so as I pick it up um, with my kneaded eraser to just soften the effect it's going to be um, a pretty soft painting today and I do need my guidelines because I do want it to look pretty realistic and professional so I'm just picking this up and trying to leave the faint outline so I can follow it fairly well. All right, so I think that's good enough. I'm gonna put this away, and I'm going to start with pre-wetting my paper because I am going to use just a little bit of um, my Thalo turquoise um, just to give it a little bit of a blue tinge, and then also, but I'm using Payne's Gray. So remember, when you start with this, you really do want your um, edges to be, we're going to be soft, and but I want the paint to flow in here gradually, leaving basically leaving a lot of my inside white and clear so that it will kind of create the illusion of being rounded. And so as I think about painting this, I'm still thinking about my value changes. I'm not using too many value changes in this, but I'm using enough that it will indicate that there's depth in my face. All right, so I can see just from the sheen. I think that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and start. And I have just a very, I'm starting very light. It's always, remember, it's always easy to start light and come back and go dark. And I'm just going to stick to the edges I'm really trying to make sure I'm staying on the outlines of my drawing. Being nice and slow. And I am going to bring this up here because the dark, the bottom is going to be a little bit darker. And if you go outside the lines, this is the time that you can come in and pick it up with your Viva paper towel. That I swear by Viva paper towels as my art teacher Bill Worrell who's always like it is the most absorbent and it is not a commercial. It's really true. Okay so as I let that be I'm going to also come back and I don't want any harsh lines. I'm re-wetting my brush and I'm picking up the center but I want it to be all smooth so I'm not going to worry if I pick up too much on the side and I still don't like what I did right here so I'm going to go back and really try to pick that up which that time I think I was successful so I can tell at the bottom I might want to add just a little bit more right here this is the time to kind of just start placing color upon color and letting it um, kind of mix in together. So as I think about this, I'm really going to be focusing on the outside of my vase or vase, however you say it. And I'm going to switch my brush to go to a more um, thinner tipped. And I'm still not going too dark. So I'm going to go along the edges. And it's still pretty wet, so I may have to come back and I'm thinking about where my light is hitting it, and I know that it's going to be darker where it's kind of coming under. And so I'm just going to let my paint kind of flow. And I can come back and I can light, I can um, make this darker if I'm not happy with it. But it's kind of creating layers. And then I am going to let it dry and come back. 
and uh, try to, and then I'll go back in and always soften my edges a little bit. So remember, hard and soft edges is what you want for, you usually, for almost everything you paint, you're looking for hard and soft edges. So building up my sides, because that's where most of my darkness will be in the vase. And so I dry off my brush when I want to come back and kind of soften these edges. And if I don't like how that's looking, then I get my brush wet again and come back in with just clear water just to give it a smoother look right in here. So this part will take a little bit of time because you're not trying to outline your whole face. You're just trying to think about where it's going to be darker and trying to create that. But, you know, like I said, with a soft inside. And it really depends on how much water you have already as to how much you need to go back and add right in here. That's the beauty of watercolor. If it's wet, you can still go in and pick it up. I do really like the phthalo turquoise and greens because they do, I mean, they're just beautiful colors. Uh, these are Daniel Smith's. And sometimes you just have to step away, let it dry for a second before you continue on. Your goal is not to, remember, overdo it, but just to create the illusion. This bottle is curved, it's got water in it, and you can create some, you know, some sides are going to be a little bit more darker, a little bit more bolder.
And you can see as I'm coming in with my vase, I'm also thinking about how that vase is rounded. So my brush strokes are also indicating that. All right, I do want this to dry a little bit because I want a little bit more definition over here as well as up at the top under my waterline right here, but not much. Always remember if it's too dark or too harsh, you can just soften it a bit. And you can also just use your paper towel to help pick things up. All right, I'm going to let this dry, and we'll look at it in just a second. So it's a little bit more dry now. I'm going to add just a few final touches to my vase before I add in my poppy. So at the bottom, I really do want you to be able to see the back. more dark up here and um, I'm not going to worry about the back just yet because I want to put in my flower first before I add in uh, and I need to turn my paper sideways sometimes I paint better this way 
but I want to add in just, I'm going to add in my um, poppy first before I create uh, just filling in the back. Okay, I feel like that's ready, and then it really needs to dry before I can bring in and draw, because I am going to draw my flower over here, and I know it's amazing that the human eye can pick up just even a few off details. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to let it be. Except for right back here, I feel like you can't really tell the waterline as well. So I did kind of do it when it was pretty wet. So I'm really going to dry my brush off and soften this out. Okay, so we'll let that dry and then we'll draw in our poppy and we will continue to paint. And since I know my poppy is going to go this way, I can go ahead and just add a little bit of line right here. So our vase has um, dried, and now we're ready to start painting our poppy. I love California poppies. They're so fun. And I'm going to start off with adding a little bit of yellow into my stem up here at the base and just bringing it down. And I'm using some Hansa Yellow Medium. I just find it mixes well with my sap green. I'm going to stop right before I get there and then go ahead and pick up some of my sap green. And as I come into the vase, I'm thinking, um, you know, you see, you have the rim and you don't really see the rim right here. So I'm not going to go all the way down into it. And I'm not going to bring my yellow down in there with the little bit of blue. And it distorts as it comes. So it's not going to be exactly underneath it and as I come to the waterline it again disappears and will reappear a little bit wonky again off to the side so it doesn't line up exactly and even when it hits down here I can see it kind of going it kind of goes down and then I'm just going to let that dry for a second and I also have a, a stem that's coming up for a leaf and so I'm just going to let that dry for a second as I focus on doing the leaves because I am going to come back and do different values for that and the poppy's leaves are so they're just so fun to paint you can't really get them wrong they're just kind of feathery So I'm going to let that dry before I come in and add a little bit more of a um, darker value because I do want to have uh, 
the side of it be a little bit darker on this side and it's pretty dry enough that I can go ahead and do that. So there we have our leaves, and I could come in and add a little bit of dark over here if I wanted. But the line doesn't have to continue all the way down because it, you know, the light refracts and it changes it. So as I'm thinking about my poppy, I I like to start with a yellow base because I want it to be kind of bright and happy, and it's kind of the same way as I do my pumpkins a little bit. It's going to be a lot of mixing on here. And I don't want that to happen, so I do need to come in and pick that up. Just like that's fine. Because that will come in and, and be darker in just a second. So we're kind of looking at our poppy from the side. And I'm going to let that dry for just a second. And we're going to add a little bit of, um, I love this color for orange, it's cad, cadmium yellow orange. It's just so bright and just adds a lot of life, as you can see. I'm mixing it on the page so it just kind of, you can kind of still reflect a little bit of the yellow underneath. And you know, the, the flower is not exactly quite open, it's just to the side, but we're going to come in and start showing some different values of where there's some shading going on. And then we'll connect it down here to the bottom. And so when I add my dark, I kind of add a little bit of pyrrole red and create to create my shadows up here. And that pyrrole red really seems to do a little nice shadow part for here and then even you know when you want to show the line right here so we'll, I need to let that dry a bit because I do want it to be um, I don't want it to be all just soft I want it to be somewhat dark in there And you can also, if you wanted to, one of the nice things about when it's still kind of wet on wet, you can kind of add some lines in here with your, you can use, sometimes I use credit cards, this is my sewing tool that I actually had. And you do have some of these darker like folds in your flowers and things like that that come up. So it kind of helps to create a some of these fine lines in here. And if I wanted to come back, I can make this a little bit darker. You can add as many poppies as you want in there. I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to go back, and I can tell that I wanted to add a little bit more darker green in here. And so you could either use a py um, you can use the pyrrole green if you wanted to, um, a perylene. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to use still use sap and just come in with a little bit darker. 
more of a pure color. And then at the bottom, I need more of my darker. It has a little bit of this flap that kind of surrounds it at the bottom. And the last thing I'm going to do is add just a bit of a shadow um, down at the bottom. So I'm going to just use my Payne's Gray once again, and it's going to be a very simple shadow, nothing super elaborate or anything, just to kind of ground it. So pretty light. And if I wanted to, I could pick up some of that um, phthalo in there. So as I'm coming down, I just really want to think about where that base is going to show right here. And bring it accent, maybe accent it out a little bit right here. Just to ground it out. Alright, well I'd probably be painting more poppies because I do love the California poppies and like I said, they're coming. They're starting to explode on my property, which is so fun. And um, I love taking pictures and photos of them. And I am going to make this a little bit more rounder. And I want it to come off to the side a little bit more over here. Okay, so there you have it. Um, you can definitely add more poppies, but this has been a fun thing. Um, spring is coming, guys, so enjoy your flower painting, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you have some poppies growing in your yard as well. Have a good day. Thanks.